Praise God. Anybody going through it? Well, praise God. You're going through it. What's the problem? <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you're going through it. <laughs> Thank God you ain't going to get stuck. <laughs> Don't get stuck there. It's nasty when you get stuck there. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Whew. Everybody feel the presence of God today? Sweet peace. Sweet joy. Sense the unction. Sometimes you just want to cry. And just gratefulness. You know? Man, I'll tell you, when you get connected to the presence of God, nothing else matters. And that's what we have to fight for all the time. We have to fight for connection. It takes denying yourself, doesn't it? It takes letting go of everything. That's why the word says, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Why? Because you can't get connected if you're carrying all these cares. You got to lose them. Amen? You know, we are in such a time, again, you will probably hear me repeat this over and over, but things are not getting better out there. They're getting worse. Destruction is getting worse. Evil is getting worse. And you know, the word says that the enemy knows his time is short, so he's going to do everything he can, and he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. No matter what, anything that God tries to build, he wants to destroy it. Does everybody get it? So there's something that you and I must be ready in season and out and have something very firm. And that is called a solid foundation. Our foundation should be solid. It must be secured. Everyone turn to your neighbor and say, you need to have a secured foundation. Secure your foundation. <laughs> Psalm 127. A, secure, a solid foundation is a secured foundation. Does everybody get it? One of the things the enemy does, he pounds on your foundation to get a crack. He pounds on your foundation till it collapses. Till what's what's been built on it can no longer hold it. But first of all, you got to build a foundation that is solid and secure. And if it's not solid and secure, it will fall, it will collapse. In Psalm 127, is everybody there? What does it say? Unless the Lord builds the house, unless the Lord builds the foundation, they labor what? In vain, who what? Who build it? Unless the Lord builds the house or the city, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. There's two words in here called vain. Vain. The Lord builds the house and the city. It is a heart that is not set in building. In other words, when God builds the heart, when he builds the house, when he builds the foundation, it is a heart that's setting towards God in every area. He's setting your heart in a position that it can't be moved. In a heart that is not set in the building or the laboring of the foundation for the king and his kingdom lives a vain life. Does everybody get it? If your heart is not set in building the kingdom of God, and if your heart is not set in allowing him to build your foundation and you building your foundation, you live a vain life. It is vain. What is vain? It's excessively high opinion of one's appearance, abilities, or worth. That's called vain. 
and it produces no results for eternal purpose or cause. I'm going to say it again, because this is what the Lord is sharing with us. He says, unless you let me build this house, you will labor in vain. In vain means an excessively high opinion of one's appearance, abilities, or worth. In other words, you're first. And it produces no results for eternal purpose or cause. The only result it builds is for self. So unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. We become vain. He says, verse 2, It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, and for so he gives his beloved sleep. It is vain. Listen, everybody goes through stuff. Amen. Amen. That's why we have the exchange prayer. Get rid of it. 1 Corinthians 3. Secured foundation. And I'm telling you right now, we need a secured foundation. And, you know, many times there are believers that are 30, 40 years supposedly believing and still don't have a solid or secure foundation. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field and you are God's building. Wow. In other words, we are co-laborers with the Holy Spirit. And that can only occur when we use the building tools and materials from the eternal warehouse. I'm going to say that again. We are co-laborers with God, the Holy Spirit. That can only occur when we use the building tools and materials from the eternal warehouse in a temporary realm. You cannot build the things of God on temporary material. It's built with eternal material. The foundation of word and spirit must be a, its main focus and foundation. It is the foundation of the word of God and the spirit of God. It's called the anointing. And the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That is a foundation. And when we're not building on the anointing, does everybody get it? We build in vain. Let's go a little further. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he what? Builds, it. builds on it. Why? Because you want to use eternal tools and material to build on this foundation. When you start mixing temporary, uh, carnal, worldly material and try and build your foundation, it will crumble and crack. It will not work. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with what? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work, which he has built on, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through the fire. 
Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And that the, temp, that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Wow. Again, we are become co-laborers with the Holy Spirit, building the house of God. This is the temple of God. Our heart must be set towards expanding the kingdom, building the kingdom, and building the foundation of God. What is discipleship? Discipleship is building the foundation for an individual. That's what it's about. That's why Jesus said, go and disciple. What was he saying? Build them a foundation. And make sure it's secured. That's our responsibility, to make sure our foundation is secured. And Luke 6. A solid foundation is a secured foundation. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 46, Luke 6, 46, training for reigning. Let's speak it. Jesus says something powerful. You talk about a rebuke here. Watch this. He goes, why do you call me Lord and do not do the things which I say? <laughs> he just rebuked them. In other words, don't call me your Lord unless you do the things I ask you to do. That's what he was saying. Whoever comes after me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep. Now I want you to grab, underline, circle, highlight the word dug deep. See, people are trying to build a foundation without digging deep. Amen. In fact, they try to copy somebody else's foundation to, di to build, and you can't. You must dig your own. That is a price that you and I must pay. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. The rock represents the anointing. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house, and could not shake it, for it was founded on a rock, but it was also because it was dug deep. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the rain of that house was great. In other words, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So we see here, Jesus rebuked them because they call him Lord, but they don't obey his sayings. You know, one of the things about building the foundation, he's saying, he's saying look, you, 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 can't, you can't say you, for, you hold on forgiveness. You can't hold on forgiveness. You can't hold bitterness in this area of foundation. You know, even the word says, do unto others is what you want them to do unto you. Amen. So in this, he's saying, those who disobey my sayings, in other words, my material, they're rejecting my tools and my material of eternal words, of the anointing, and they're not building on this. They're building on their own things, and that's offense, rejection, Bitterness. Amen. How about what you sow is what you reap. Sowing to the flesh, you reap corruption. 
That's why these things can't stay built. They're not secured. The word says, seek ye the kingdom of God first, not the world first. Amen? These things all will affect your foundation, whether it's secured or whether it's not. That foundation's got to be solid. Only a solid foundation is secured. So God brings us through stuff. One of the things we got to find out, where are we at in our foundation? Are we truly digging deep? A solid, a solid foundation is a secured foundation. The deeper you dig, the thicker the foundation. Again, the deeper you dig, the thicker the foundation. In other words, that means penetrate, search, seek. You know, you don't hit oil unless you dig. The deeper you dig in the spirit through worship and the deeper you practice the word, the more solid you will become. Does everybody get it? Anybody get it? Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah, James 1. <laughs> now some of y'all fell off your foundation for a minute. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> you know, when a person backslides, it doesn't mean they backslid that day. They backslid before they backslid. Amen. Amen? The enemy was beating on that foundation. He was able to crack it or, or infiltrate it somehow until that foundation finally crumbled. And there was no longer a foundation. You know, if your foundation is insecure when a storm comes, it begins to crumble. James 1.21. Oh, Oh, happy days. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls or secure your foundation. But be what? Be what? Doers. That means someone who puts the word to practice. But be a doer of the word, not hearers only. Because there's a lot of people who hear. You know, you talk to them, they nod their head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and don't do nothing. <laughs> but be doers of the word, not hearing, hearers, only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately does what? Forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, and what? And continues... And it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. In other words, he's talking about still building the foundation. That work is called building the foundation. So we're using the tools and the materials of eternity to build the foundation. Verse 26. And again, it says, this one will be blessed in what he does. Listen, the world can bless you, but when God blesses you, it's different. Because the world wants to bless you to keep you away from the blessings of God. Not that God can't use someone in the world to bless you. But you know that that source is the Lord. And God is just using a resource but so many people look to bless themselves. And that will contaminate the foundation. Is everybody there? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 20 something. 26. If anyone among you thinks he is religious or spiritual, let me use that word, and does not bridle his tongue 
but deceives his own heart. This one's religion or spiritualness is useless. It's called in vain. Pure and undefiled spirituality and religion before God and the Father is this. To visit orphans and widows. In other words, you're denying yourself. You're putting all their needs in first. In their trouble. And keep oneself unspotted from the, from the world. Uncontaminated. Anything that is not approved by God is called wicked and evil. <laughs> and, an un, and it will cause contamination in an unconverted soul or even in a converted soul. To become a doer is a practicer. It's a lover of the word, a practicer of the word. It's a liver of the word. We live it. It's a guidance of eternal words in a temporary realm. God arms us, not only with the anointing, but with his word, with the sword, with his name, his blood. He gives us weapons. Those are eternal weapons. His name, his word, and his blood is eternal weapons. His presence is an eternal weapon for us. He gives us the keys of the kingdom to bind and loose. Those are eternal weapons. He gives us love from above and wisdom from above. Those are weapons. Amen. What's it for? So we can overcome distractions, temptations, lust of the world's influence. So we can keep ourselves unspotted from sin or what we call wicked or evil influence. Anything that God does not approve of is wicked and evil. Amen? 1 John chapter 1. Secured foundation. First John 1 verse 5. <laughs> Somebody there. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness. At all. There's no gray areas in God. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And we do not practice the truth. So is the foundation crumbled. Yes. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, hallelujah, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Wow. So the message is to practice the truth. Be honest with self, others, and God. Be honest. Chapter 3. In verse 4. Now whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now, we know that everybody must work out their own salvation. So at any moment, we can fall into the trap of sin. We can fall right off the foundation and sink. In verse 10, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. That means that person is not walking on the foundation of Christ. They're building on the foundation of the world. 
abilities, talents, past, successes, failures. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother or sister. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteousness. In other words, God disapproved of his works. He had no foundation. That was the difference between Cain and Abel. A foundation and no, a secured foundation and one without a secured foundation. But even the one that had a secured foundation got killed. I guess he should have been ready. <laughs> he should have realized, man, my brother is wicked, evil. I gotta be I gotta keep one eye on him and one eye on the Lord. <laughs> See, he had to be ready in season and out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyways, to God be the glory. That means there's an area where you and I, we have to abide. <clears throat> abide in Christ because of the secured foundation. If it's solid, the enemy will not. He tries to lure you off, but he can't push you off. Does everybody get it? There's a difference. The enemy will try to lure you off your foundation, but he cannot push you off because he can't touch you. When you're on a solid foundation, you are protected. But of course, the word says that the devil comes as a roaring lion. Amen? He makes those paper airplanes and throws them on your foundation and with all kinds of words of lust and deception. And Don't pick them up and read them. Just keep your foundation clean by sweeping anything that comes on there, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that means we must abide. He who abides because it is a secured and solid foundation. Again, the enemy attempts, attacks to weaken the foundation. He does that with offense, rejection, resentment, bitterness, fear, lust, even drugs, alcohol. Even medications of mental, with mental effects, it weakens the foundation. The more we let evil pound or attempt to crack our foundation, the more it's going to begin to crumble. Amen? How about disappointments, discouragements, oppression and heaviness? All of those things the enemy uses to try to crack the foundation. Anybody ever been disappointed? Don't raise your hand. Anybody ever been offended? Don't raise your hand. Anybody ever been rejected? Don't raise your hand. We all have been. We've all made dumb choices. Amen. But don't look back. Don't look back. Let God build that foundation. You use the tools of eternity and the materials of eternity and build it again. Amen? Amen. And then keep it swept clean. And the enemy can't come on there. Again, the only thing you do is lure you off. He can't push you off. James 4. You know, one of the things that begins to happen is your big, uh, one of the, the great lures uh, uh, of the devil, you know, people go fishing and use fishing lures to catch fish, you know. The enemy uses lustful lures. He uses yourself. <laughs> he tries to use yourself to get your foundation messed up or to get you off the foundation somehow. He knows the places that we are weak. He also knows the places we are strong. And when you take the places off where you're your eyes off of where you're strong, that's where he tags. When you're protecting your weaknesses, he can't get there. 
Amen? So that constant building and keeping secure the foundation, it must be solid no matter what. Now, what he tries to do is not only to lure you off or try to invite someone on your foundation. That's why bad company corrupts good habits. Associations bring impartations. So the enemy tries to join you with associations that try to destroy your foundation. And let me tell you, they don't always know it. Because if a person is weak in the spirit, the enemy's using that person to destroy your, to try to crack your foundation or contaminate your foundation. James 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? What is a strong desire? It's called lust. Hello? You lust and do not have. See, he says it. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask it, you're trying to build something else and not Christ's foundation. You ask and don't receive because you ask and miss that you may spend it on your pleasures or your carnal foundation. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So you become an enemy of God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. In other words, a plan of escape. Therefore, he says, God resists the what? Proud and arrogant. Why? Because their foundation is not being built on humility and humbleness, which is material from eternity. But he gives grace to the humble. In other words, he gives you a way of escape. He gives you the plan to do what? To build the kingdom of God and to establish your foundation. Therefore, submit to God. Submit to his building material and his tools. Submit to his word. Submit to his presence. Forsake not to assemble. Submit. And then you'll be able to resist the devil and he will flee from you. But if you're not submitting to God, you can't resist the devil. Why? Because your foundation is already contaminated. Weak foundations turn to the world. I'm going to say that again. Those with weak foundations turn to the world with comfort, help, and support. They associate with those who are prideful, lustful. They go back to drugs, alcohol, sin, and other addictions. They're looking for comfort from the world instead of comfort from the Holy Spirit. Instead of departing from evil, they maybe unknowingly or knowingly run to it, search it out according to the old way of life and the old way of living. We can't do that now. Things are getting really crazy out there. Things are getting worse. We got to be penetrators of darkness. We got to be able to see through darkness. We got to keep our foundation clean and secured, swept and put in order. Everything's got to be in divine order now. Things are about to happen. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, the flood and the storm that has come already is going to get a lot worse. It's going to shake the whole world. Listen to what the Spirit says. You must have a secure foundation to be able to survive. Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3. Remember, we've been warned already about the flood. Wait, it's just the beginning. No matter what you're going through, whether you're sick, or no matter what,
whether you have problems, whether you have a relationship, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Whether it's job, lack of job, lack of finances, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You keep your foundation secure, and I'm telling you, God will take care of everything. If you'll just let him. You don't need to build a trap door on your foundation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Galatians 3. Let's grow there. Verse 1. Oh, foolish Christians. <laughs> Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Who has bewitched you? That means you've been influenced by evil. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. In other words, what happened? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing it of faith? Are you so stupid or foolish, having gone and having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by your pride, arrogance, haughtiness, and lust? Have you suffered so many things in vain? You poor little thing, you. If indeed it was in vain. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. That means you have an inheritance. Amen. <laughs> And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you all the nations will be blessed. So then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham because that is your inheritance. But listen, her inheritances are delayed or stolen when the foundation is contaminated and cracked. Amen. Bewitched, evil influence, enticed, provoked by demonic forces to leave or walk away from the will of God, willing and not willing to turn or run from evil. This is where a person continues in, in an area of pride and arrogance and haughtiness and worldliness, and the foundation is unsecure because of a continuous pounding of the evil ones. They are continuously pounding you know you, know, you got to understand that the what the enemy didn't snare you with today he's preparing to try and snare you with tomorrow Amen. every day he's trying to snare you with something he's trying to set us up he's trying to lure us off the foundation he's trying to contaminate he's trying to crack it he's constantly pounding i always look at it as like a you know like a a, a a solid foundation that's floating in the ocean. And you're on it. And if it crumbles or cracks, it sinks, and there's no rescue, only Jesus can come and rescue you. He'll have to lift you up and pull you out and to begin to rebuild that foundation again. But why rebuild it? Let's keep it clean and, amen? And let's, get not, let's not get lured off the foundation. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. Be careful of what you see, what you hear, and what you agree with. And especially what you say. Oh, snap. 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is where we are now. Is everybody there? Amen. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Amen. Yeah. 
some will depart from the faith. If they're departing from the faith, are they de departing from the foundation? Yeah. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. They are more now than there ever have been on the surface. I'm going to say that again. There are more deceiving, seductive, seducing, demonic spirits now than there ever has been. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Many will depart from the faith, swept off their foundation. In these last days of floods and influences of evil desires. You know, I, again, the Spirit warns us that in these latter times, many will depart. They'll be deceived. In 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, in verse 18. Let's speak it, please. He said that when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. You know, you got to understand that right now our media is out to destroy the foundation of Christ. CNN and all of them, they're out to destroy the foundation of Christ. They are promoters of evil and wickedness. And many Christians have lost their foundations or contaminated because they've fallen into it. Approving of abortion. Approving of same-sex marriage. Approving of all these things that God disapproves of. Because their foundation has either never been built or solid or secure. It's always been contaminated. Many individuals proclaiming to be Christians have been living a contaminated foundation their whole life. Just because they've been brought up in church. That doesn't mean they're right with God. The word says that they would have a form of godliness but deny the power. He warned us. He said, stay away from individuals like this because they'll contaminate you. They'll cause individuals to compromise. Amen? We don't want to compromise. We can't. Compromising will contaminate the foundation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Start at verse 18. Let's do that. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they promise them free education, free health care. They promise them all kinds of free things. These are lies. It would cause the country to be $40 trillion in debt in a matter of years. They can't do it. But they're trying to get the votes and lie. Because there's so many dumb people out there that don't know the truth. And God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They've been on this trend and agenda for decades and generations. We are reaching the climax of everything now. You and I have been rescued and alive because God wants to use us to reveal the truth. Amen. And to rescue those who have been taken captive in their minds and who have been taking control. While they promise them freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption for by whom a person is overcome by them also he is brought into bondage for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning well for it would have been better for them not have known the way of righteousness than having known it 
to turn from the holy commandment and deliver to them. But it, it has uh, happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and a soul having washed to her wallowing in the mire. They were removed from the foundation and returning to the old ways of living. Some have never left the old ways of living. Does everybody understand that? Proclaiming to believers, being believers thinking it's some kind of religious act. Well, I go to church, I tithe. I, word, I read the word and I, speak, I feed and I clothe and I shelter people. But there's no connection. There's no connection with person. There's no connection in the spirit, in the presence of God with person. To know him. Without the word of God, without anything else, personally know him. And being led by him. Letting him speak to you and teach you. So be okay. I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. Hallelujah. Secured foundation. A solid foundation is a secured foundation. First John chapter 2 and verse 18. Is everybody there? Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know it is the last hour. Now listen, these spirits, these are spirits. There's individuals that are possessed, okay? But there are spirits that are influ influencing Christians. They're Antichrist spirits. Why? Because they're trying to break the uh, foundation. They're trying to contaminate the foundation. They come in all kinds of forms. Oh, little children, is the last hour, and you have heard that, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Why? Because they got deceived. Foundation got cracked, contaminated, or they got lured off. For they had been, if, the, if, for if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest. And that none of them were of us. There's a lot of forms of godliness. Man, there are people out there that you think are spiritual and right with God. And let me tell you, their foundation is contaminated. But God sees it all. We might not, but he sees it all. Verse 20, but you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One and you, you what? You know all things. So you will be able to discern. Discerning doesn't always mean that you're to do something about it. Discerning prepares you. Does everybody get it? And then when the Spirit tells you to do something about it, you do it. But discerning is always an area of preparing. That's why the Spirit tells you things to come. Verse 21, <clears throat> I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar? But he who denies Jesus is the Christ. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. So with this person or individuals, look at me, let me share with you. Just because somebody doesn't deny Jesus as being Lord and Savior doesn't mean they're walking right. You know them by their fruit. Amen? There's a lot of people who say, I know God. I, lo I love Jesus. I believe Jesus. But their fruit stinks. Because their foundation is contaminated. Or if they never really had a built, secured foundation. It says, he is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, if you keep it continuous, 
you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he promises us. That's eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who what? Try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you don't need someone to come up and tell you what's going on. You should know it. Although you get confirmation by that. But the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie just as it is taught you. You will abide in him in the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Amen? The anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty in Christ Jesus must be maintained and activated by abiding, standing, hmm, and building with the tools and materials of eternal realm. Everything that Jesus provides for me and you. So we are settled and grounded in his love then. Amen? Amen? We have an understanding of his word and his purpose. And we have a relationship with him and his person. Now, our primary of, purpose of all things as a true believer with a solid foundation, a secured foundation, is to be well-pleasing to him. Amen. If that is not there, your foundation is contaminated. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace of any area of contamination of our own foundation. Lord, we ask that you make it solid and secure. Grant us the discernment and increase the anointing in our life that we may see things through, hear things through, and follow things through. And that we may be well-pleasing to you in whatever we do in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.